just so you know, when you go to put a little bit of cinnamon in your coffee, make sure you're paying attention because I put cayenne pepper in my coffee this morning and I ruined it and I was so disturbed and I'm like, oh my God, there better be another pod for my curing and there was one left. So cheers. I've got a coffee going here. Cayenne, pe cayenne pepper does not work in coffee. No. Good morning, Bob. How are you this morning? Tracy, good morning. Nancy, how are you? And Tommy's in the house. David's in the house. David never left the house. <laughs> good morning, Michelle and Marion. How are you this morning? So good to have you all here on Wake Up to the Vibe. So yes, Monday, new format. Tune in. Good stuff going. And then tomorrow, I just want to let you know, make sure you stick around for tomorrow's show. Um, I've got some good stuff tomorrow, but Friday also Keaton Simmons is on the show and phenomenal musician. We are finding amazing musicians here, ladies and gentlemen, the beauty of the internet. So I'm hanging one day and, and my good friend Pucky Agresta sends me, uh, sends me a message and says, Hey, Joe, you got to check this dude out. So and it's like 11 o'clock at night and, and we're watching Facebook live and we're tossing videos back and forth to each other. So we find this guy on the internet from Utica, New York. He comes all the way from upstate New York, Utica, where is the sun going to shine? Is it finally going to shine? This is the longest winter ever, which is what drove me to North Carolina. Um, but what I've learned I'm going to share with you what I know, and then I'm going to let Noah share the rest, okay, is that this guy went from corporate America and decided, done, following my dreams, and I love that. Later on in life, it's never too late to launch your dreams, but you need to put a plan in action, as we learned yesterday uh, from, our, from our guest, our author, who said, a dream without a plan will always remain a dream, and uh, I like that. But here's the other thing I really picked up. Confessional songwriting. I love that. It's like, yeah, man, I'm just going to confess here in this song. Uh, please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, the guy who treats every gig like it's his first and his last. I want to welcome my guest, Noah Dinerstein. Good morning, Noah. How are you? Good morning. You're reminding me what I wrote on my about me page. Well, that what do you think I get all this stuff? You think I make this yeah. up? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I uh, I'm being reminded. I think I wrote it like two years ago. Well, you know, uh, it caught my attention. I mean, when I when I see some of this stuff and I go, oh, my gosh, there, there were so many different things I'm reading. And I, I felt like I was looking in the mirror because just so you know, because you and I don't know each other. All right. Correct. We met five minutes ago, literally. All right. Correct. You were killing me last night. It was so funny. You're like, all right, man, I, I know I said I'd be on your show, but who are you? <laughs> and yeah. what is what is this show? <laughs> asked, like we had we set this up about well, you first contacted me a few weeks ago, I couldn't do it. Then we set it up about three days ago or whatever. And then I said yes, and then about a minute before midnight, I was like, Who the heck are you? <laughs> I said yes because wake up the vibe. It just sounded cool. So you're like, yeah, man, love to be on your show. And then, I mean, like, when you say radio host, then you get into like an egocentric musician brain. Then right. we say yes. <laughs> but I was laughing when you were texting me. I started laughing. You're like, hey, uh, man, I, I need to ask you, who are you, and what is this show that <laughs> right. I'm on tomorrow morning? <laughs> <laughs> right that's classic There's very few things you could have said that would have canceled this I, I you know i don't know what you could have said that i would say ah, i can't do it well after after we were chatting back and forth that's why i wrote are we good are you still on my show after i spilled the beans <laughs> right 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 so hey this is uh this is a moment in history though thank you so much let me say thank you for being on the show we just crossed a thousand followers and i know in the world of streams there are big shows out there like Joe Rogan, you know, 10 million followers. We're going to get there, but I appreciate people like yourself who are willing to get on when we're at this, uh, you know, what a thousand followers is like the foundation. The concrete was just poured on the ground. Yeah, no. And congratulations. I, I like being part of the kind of the grassroots of it. And uh, I shared it with uh, all my people. So hopefully they'll jump on board, too. Yeah. So uh, I'm excited for you, even though I met you five minutes ago. 
Awesome. Awesome. All right. So now we're going to get to know each other and, and it's going to involve music and life. Okay. But I got to ask you this because you have a Utica shirt on and you live in New Utica, New York. Dude, why are the Utica greens, <laughs> the Utica greens and beans, why are they so popular? They're awesome. They're like world known. Oh, yeah. I like, There's, well, one, I've never gone anywhere and, and been able to order anything like it. It's, it's amazing. And, just, and, and if someone tries to recreate it, it usually doesn't come out right. Did, but I will say, you're in North Carolina right now, right? Yes, I'm from upstate New York. I'm from Amsterdam, New York. Yeah, we have tons of Uticans that end up in North Carolina. Yes, as a matter of fact. For, for whatever, like when they get tired of the, you know, the 10-month winter here, <laughs> they go to North Carolina. So if there's, if there's one other place in the world where maybe somebody's doing Utica greens correctly, it might be North Carolina. I'm, I'm going to hunt them down. And if you have any connections, send me an email, okay? I want to know who I, they are. <laughs> All right, nice. I will. I will. We we have listeners from all over the U.S. I know uh, my buddy Scott is is a regular on the show. Uh, he was on the show yesterday. He's an author. He's, he's from uh, Charlotte. We've got listeners in California, uh, Texas. It, it's pretty cool. So here's for our three. Here's our three things in Utica, right? We got the Utica greens. We got tomato pie. You know tomato pie? I do. I, I'm Italian, man. I know what tomato pie is. <laughs> and we got half moons. We invented the half moon cookie, which other people call the black and white cookie. Oh, is that right? We got the half moon. I didn't know that was a Utica um, staple. <laughs> yeah, that's a state. That's an invention at Hemstrat's Bakery, which is about a block away from me. Oh, no kidding. So, all right. Yeah. So, and, and then listen, tomato pie. Oh, my gosh. It's like breakfast food you know it's awesome yeah, yeah. oh you can go through a box and <laughs> no, serious. definitely right but so amsterdam new york i'm from amsterdam home of kirk douglas okay okay home of the cabbage patch doll uh that's where it was made and manufactured in amsterdam new york <laughs> and and also a home of wake up to the vibe okay because <laughs> that's where the radio show was 10 years ago oh it was <laughs> yeah oh, it was the same name it was the same name i and it was uh i i own the name i bought the web address and through this pandemic oh, i just decided to fire it up again for fun and here we are you know a amsterdam new york has a cool place in my heart because saratoga performing arts center was where i saw all my shows growing up yeah and when i would pass amsterdam i knew that i was getting close yeah exit 27 baby <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. Oh my gosh! So, so you, you, a, a couple things. You, you were inspired, to, uh, inspired at ten years old to be a singer, songwriter, musician. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you believe that? Does that make any sense to you? No, it doesn't. I'm reading this on your About Us page, and I'm going. <laughs> So my dad, my dad had this thing of like showing us movies when we were probably like too young, really, to get it. Like we saw Animal House way too young, <laughs> but uh, I was probably always privy to it because my older brother, you know, he he got to see it and then I got to come along. But we saw we watched Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and I wasn't inspired to become a singer songwriter at that point. But when I saw the scene where he takes over the parade, right. You know that scene? I, I, you know, I'm not. I've never watched the show in my life. True story. You've seen the movie Ferris Bueller? <laughs> no, I never did. Oh, I hope. I hope your people are commenting right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't see the comments, but I hope people are commenting that are yelling. There's uh, a scene. I, I, I'm sure they are. <laughs> yeah. If we, to, your homework for tonight is to watch Ferris Bueller's Day Off, it's one um, of the best movies ever. I'm gonna watch this particular episode. <laughs> that you're talking well, it's about. It's not a show, it's a movie. Oh, oh, it's not a series. It's not like Leave It to Beaver. No, no, it's a movie. <laughs> Matthew Broderick back in like the 80s. All right, all right. So there's a scene where Matthew Broderick's character like takes over an entire parade. Like it's almost like the Thanksgiving Day parade, something that size. And he sings Twist and Shout by the Beatles into the mic when, you know, he's not even supposed to be there, but everybody like joins in because he's so charismatic and he's so, you know, likable and friendly and that that scene i didn't know about singer songwriter i didn't know about guitar playing really for myself but i just knew about like stage presence and 
entertaining and being there for the people and doing it for people. And I was, I was looking at that and I wasn't scared of that type of situation. I realized that about myself at like 10, I realized like I could do that. So did you go grab a broom or something and like just start like jamming out on a broom? <laughs> I was doing all I was jamming out on whatever I could find back in the day, man. <laughs> your mother your mother was just shaking her head, going, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Correct. Correct. They got me a toy guitar at like four and I was just walking around with it. <laughs> well, and so from there it takes you to obviously uh being influenced, which is one of the things I thought was cool, uh, because I, I actually was just watching his video last night. Uh, was John Mayer. Uh, yes. He's a very well-respected guitar player uh, beyond his radio stuff. I'm I'm actually not even a huge fan of his radio stuff, but yeah. I love the stuff he plays when he's on the Clapton uh, Crossroads Festival and doing that type oh, of yeah. thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, John Mayer, that was really, that was kind of the point of, oh, let me get a guitar in my hands. Like the Ferris Bueller thing, okay, I'm, whatever, I was 10, right. performing, but John Mayer, I watched his debut music video called no such thing mm -hmm. and he he kind of even like looked like me and he his video looked like it could have been put together like pretty quickly and easily and i was like i could do that right. um i didn't realize at that point how much of a masterful guitar player he was i really couldn't do that but <laughs> right. i tried my best and uh yeah that's when i asked my parents to buy me a guitar so so you're 10 years old you're watching ferris bueller and you decide yeah, man, I can entertain. And then you're watching VH1 and you see John Mayer and you're like, I could entertain like that. <laughs> exactly right. I love it. That's how I should have, that's how I should have written it on my bio. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's a good story, man. It, it really is. It's a, it's a cool progression of, of singer songwriter. How old were you when you actually started to sit down and, and say, you know what? I'm actually, I want to write my own stuff. I don't want to play twist and shout and, and gravity. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, yeah. so uh, you wrote your own it's material. Funny. It's funny. I was, uh, my, my first instinct was to write my own stuff. Mm -hmm. I really was not, um, in it to learn covers. Um, I was writing my own stuff at 15, which was when I picked up the guitar. So, you know, I, I, I went into guitar lessons and I would always bring a Dave Matthews band CD with me. And I would say, I learned the wrong way. For anybody listening, if they <laughs> want to hear what not to do, it's to just bring in a song and tell the guitar teacher, teach me the song. Because right. you're missing all the basics. I didn't know notes. I didn't know the names <laughs> of the strings. I didn't know chords. I just knew the shapes that my hands had to make to sound like Dave Matthews. So, so... so I, I learned exactly the wrong way, but yeah, I learned Dave songs and, but I was writing my own songs from the beginning, terrible, terrible songs, but I was writing them from the beginning. <laughs> so, you know, it's funny you mentioned knowing the names of the strings and I, I used to teach guitar. Eddie eight dynamite. Goodbye, Eddie. Those are the names of the strings, right? E A D G B E Eddie like eight dynamite. Goodbye, Eddie. Someone said that to, someone said that to me when I was 10 years old and I never forgot. Eddie ate dynamite. Goodbye, Eddie. Makes sense, right? No way, that's five. Eddie ate dynamite, E A D. Well, goodbye is one word, but we separate. Oh, goodbye. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you had to separate it for the sake of the names of the strings. <laughs> okay, nice. I like it. Right. <laughs> oh man. So listen, um you you went off into the into the corporate world, right? So you move on in life, you get married, you go and you and you lock down a job in the corporate world. You were in the hotel business? Was it a hotel in Manhattan? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I went to Boston University. I went to the hotel business. Um, I was always writing songs on the side, but it, at that point I kind of just got sucked into the idea of corporate culture and just moving up the ranks. And, and I like, I really liked hospitality too. I, I was, I was really good at it and I loved it. I had a passion for it. Um, and, but songwriting was on the back burner. That's, that's a tough, that's a tough position to be in. And, and, and I get it. I've been there. I used to own a recording studio, wrote songs, the whole nine yards. It's a tough position to be in because when you're a true artist, it eats at you from the inside. Correct. Right? That's exactly right. 
That's exa- I just had recently because I still struggle with it because it's such a, you know, how many artists, so, there's something like 40,000 songs uploaded to Spotify a day. A day. So out of those 40,000 songs a day, we are trying to get our song to be the one that's 10 million streams, 100 million streams, right? Like, so it's still tough on a daily basis. Like, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, like, you know, that leaving all that behind, um, I'm, I'm completely conscious free of it and I don't, it doesn't weigh on me. Like it's still, it's still a thing, you know, but I had a aunt who was really like a mentor to me too. And she said, you know, not everybody in life has a calling and you have a calling and this thing is just going to be calling at you and calling at you until you really full on embrace it. Yeah, man. I can so relate to that. I, I lost my mom years ago. And one of the last things that she said to me was good luck with your music. So then I go on in life and I'm selling, you know, bus routing you software. You just got chills, man. Oh, man. And, and it, it stayed with me. You know, I could hear her voice. Good luck with your music. Good luck with your music. So while I'm selling bus routing software or e-commerce platforms, right. my mother's voice is in my head. Good luck with your music. Good luck with your music. And that's it's kind of weird how now we're here on wake up to the vibe and, and I'm working with people like yourself on music. It doesn't have to be my music, but my God have music in your life, right? Yes. Know your yes. passion. So good for you. I, I give you a lot of credit, man. i got chills too, man. I, I could relate to what you're saying. So your aunt was a big supporter of, of you and, and your music. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she, she still is, you know, she's always, there's always that one or like two people in your family. Usually one is like (laughs) leading the charge where it's like everything you put out is God's gift to the world. Right. And that, that's who she is. The rest of the family's (laughs) going, what are you crazy? (laughs) You're never going to pay the bills. Right. And then there's that one family member going, you're going to be awesome. man." Right. Right. Exactly. It's so true. yeah, I mean, in times what you said by 10. <laughs> but um, yes, I mean, everybody I think is like, you know, every time um, I do something like release a music video or release my new single or get invited on a radio show or whatever, get invited to uh, 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 open for a big band or whatever, everybody's kind of like coming, I'm kind of dragging everybody <laughs> along with me, you know? <laughs> But, I, I uh, get no, it. There'll be there'll be some people that are holding out until I'm like headlining Madison Square Garden. Yeah, and you know, no, listen. Even then, they're gonna show <laughs> up and they're gonna go. You know what you should do? <laughs> it's just well, no, not no. My family would say, "Thanks for the free tickets, but you couldn't have gotten us closer. Better. <laughs> you couldn't have done better than this." <laughs> yeah, we we were in the fifteenth row. You couldn't have done fifth. Man, that is so funny. But that that is the true definition of life. I think that now I think music though is kind of the underdog career. Like I think when you're a guitar player in high school, <laughs> you get a you get kind of a bad rap, you know, especially depending on what era you grow up in, grew up in. Yeah. But, you know, when like myself I was in, the, in my buddy's garage and we're ripping out Ted Nugent songs and Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin. It was hard for my parents to embrace that. They were praying right. to God I wouldn't come out looking like that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Keep your hair short. Right. You know? <laughs> so so uh, what what type of music other than John Mayer, though, but like growing up, what what, what are your influences? Because I, I hear some things in your music and, and I'm curious what, what your influences are before I tell you what I'm hearing. Oh, cool. Yeah. Please tell me what you're hearing too. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough because I know what I like, but it's tough to say what I was influenced by. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like what you like and what you're influenced by are two different questions. Like I grew up in a house with my dad playing James Taylor, Fleetwood Mac, the Eagles, um, the Beatles, like I know all that stuff when I, at a very young age. I, mean, I remember like Obla Di Obla Da was, I was on all the time. Um, and then that's kind of, so I, I, I know that that got into me. And then what I liked was Matchbox 20, Google Dolls, Dave Matthews Band, uh, Foo Fighters, Coldplay, uh, Fish, 
Um, those are like my favorite bands growing up and, and still today. Well, now I can share with you what I heard. So when I listen cool. to your stuff, because you have a unique voice, you do. Like there, Thank you. there are voices that are just, you know, unique in their own way. But then there's the voice that you go, wow, it's kind of interesting, right? And that's why I, I sent you an email. I'm like, hey, I want you to be on my show. But you oh, know nice. what? Thank I can't you. believe you said obla oh, di obla oh, da. Because your music, when I listen to the raw form of it, the broken down, not the layered tracks, not the overdubs, the real sitting down with your acoustic guitar, I heard some of the Beatles arrangements, man, and it was very interesting. I also wow. I also heard like a this David Bowie thing coming out of the side into this music. I'm like, wow, that that kind of like had a little Bowie-ish in it, you know? Wow, that, yeah, that's a first. Uh, you know, I was afraid to tell you that because some people will be offended. You know, the walkway going, I can't can't take that artist. Why did he say that? But I have no. a great deal of respect for both of those artists. No, I mean, I don't listen to Bowie, but I don't. I have a great deal of respect. You know, it's like one of those. Oh. And I know that, you know, if I sent this clip to a lot of, uh, you know, like my 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 dad's generation, they would be like, that's a huge compliment. <laughs> well, it, and it is. It is because I'm, I, I love Bowie, man. I, I listen that's to cool. him. I, I just like to hear. I, I love when people kind of hear something out of the box that yeah. I, I'm not as familiar with. But I think we're all influenced by anything that's come before us. So. If Bowie somehow made it into my songwriting, <laughs> I'm happy about it. You're there, man. You're there. I'm I'll, there. I'll tell you what we're going to do. <clears throat> and and it, it wasn't this particular song. Just I'm, I'm speaking in general terms, okay? Oh, sure. Um, I want to play a song for our viewers because the, cause I know what happens when you have a songwriter on and you talk for half an hour. They're like, come on, man. Play the <laughs> right. song, will you? Quit your, quit your <laughs> right. talking, Joe. <laughs> So I'm going to play a song. The first one is it's called My Message. Yeah. Right? Am I right on the title? Can you can you set it up for me? What is this song? Yeah. Um so it was inspired by a line um actually that's that's a famous line from Judaism that's in the Torah and it it's it's a line that's trying to define happiness. Like what is happiness? So the line is wealthy is the man who's happy with his lot. So wealthy that say line, that again say that again yeah sure wealthy is the man who is happy with his lot i like that like the like like the like the cards he was dealt in yep. his life or whatever's you know what whatever's around him you know it, if he's man. got a glass of water and, and a roof over his head or he's, if he's got a palatial palace he's happy with his lot right i love that so the whole song and it's kind of cool for this time period during the pandemic when you know some people are you know down and out some people are unemployed whatever it is um it's just about appreciating life and being extremely present and kind of enjoying that present and getting ready building building yourself in in that appreciation of the present that's beautiful it, it's a it's a pow very powerful statement find that contentment man and as soon as you find that contentment when you're at peace with where you are and what you have happiness is there man i love that That's yeah good stuff. And, and i think people will see you're, you're about to show it i i get carried away with this song like i i i try to be true to the song and i get very present inside the song when yeah. i'm playing it very cool so you go you go by live noah yeah like my it's like like lady gaga like I, <laughs> like my stage name is live noah because i couldn't yeah. do noah diner scene it's just too hard to spell. I was imagining people trying to type it in, trying to find this kid. What is it? Noah Diner, Steiner, Silver Burger, man. So I'm like, live Noah, whatever. Steiner Burger, he goes. <laughs> All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you on mute real quick. We're going to go listen to the song, and I'll be right back. You're listening to Wake Up to the Vibe here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with live Noah, and this is a song called My Message. Let's give it a listen. Feel 
up to the vibe oh my gosh man i love it we got the energy going it's going fired up man good stuff good awesome. stuff oh, yeah. well, i just i just like watching you vibe to it i forget <laughs> i'm like embarrassed right now i forget you could actually see me because once i hit play i can't see you i'm watching the video <laughs> And I and I can't hear it. So I know, I'm just man. By you, <laughs> good stuff, man. That it's Thank you. got such a and I'm and I heard the Bowie in there. I'm telling you, it's That's just. Cool. I wonder if you're. I wonder if like some of your listeners are gonna agree with you. I I, I I'm very intrigued by that. It, it, yeah just you, you have such a cool voice man you you cool. you have a creative voice like you can go in so many different areas you know what i mean yeah and, yeah and and i am getting beat up a little bit in the chat room on the ferris bueller thing <laughs> good good you should be no, i know you said it and now i'm being harassed i got stalkers in there man. oh yeah oh yeah you should be i think you're gonna be bullied into going to watch it i'm watching it tonight man yeah but yeah in my message um i th i mean i think you saw like i just i just kind of like my, my big thing is just being anytime i went to a concert you could tell almost immediately if the musician was into it or yeah. not and it makes such a difference and so like i think i'm just doing a huge disservice if, if my brain is somewhere else or if i'm not giving it my all if i if I don't leave, walk off the stage and I'm not like drenched in sweat, I, I, I did something wrong, you know? Even if I'm playing three songs and open mic, I'm trying, like I said in my bio that you read and you reminded me, like I really am trying to get into that mode of 
every performance is my first and last. Yeah, man. Because it, it could be, right? It could be your last. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate I love watching you just kind of, like, vibe to it and uh, and feel it. It's, like, it's, really feeling, it's you know, I know, it's, it. I know it's an acoustic song, but it's electric. And when I say electric, I'm talking about in terms of, like, electricity. It, 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 that song is, like, how can you not? How can you listen to that and just be still, man? <laughs> oh, cool. That's so great to hear, man. That's what I was going for. I love that. Yeah, that's funny. We, we have a lot in common. I, when I, I used to play in, in a, a, I've been in a few bands, but I would leave the stage so drenched and I would say to the other guys, do you people sweat or is it just me? <laughs> <laughs> and it's not out of nervousness. It's out of like passion. Right? Adrenaline, man. It's like yeah. pedal to the metal. Let's go. So, yep. So with that said... <laughs> Yeah, because you scare me sometimes like when I'm reading, like I told you I was reading your bio and and I get nervous when I identify things about myself and I go right. my so you said something in your bio about you have a love hate relationship with the bar yes <laughs> I completely understand that term. <laughs> completely. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that, if you don't mind. Can we go down that road? What does that yeah, mean? Sure. What does that mean? Yeah. No, yeah, because I think I think that leads to the next song you're going to show, right? Yes, it does. Bit. Yes, it does. Yeah. yeah, so I think at that point in the bio, I was explaining my first single, which is called When All Your Friends Are Bartenders. <laughs> and you kind of you know, a thinking person kind of knows the entire theme of that song and what it's about just by the title. That's right. Like when all your friends are bartenders, you could take it a positive way and that could be a big negative way or in, in all types of places in the middle. Right. It usually starts so, off positive in the beginning of the night. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's yeah, a negative thing. This morning we can all agree. <laughs> <it's negative>. <laughs> <laughs> but pretty much the, the, the long story long is that I was living this very kind of like cookie cutter life um, that I set up for myself, kind of like a up and coming young professional, pretty successful in New York City. I was married. I was living in the Upper West Side. I was, you know, working, you know, in, in the corporate world. I, I, I didn't hate it. It's not a story of like making cold calls all day and I hated it. Um, it, it was it was just good. Um but, you know, there's really something inside me that, like, good, for me, it's just good is not enough. It just doesn't doesn't bode well with me. <laughs> just content <laughs> is not pleasant. It's just not enough. So, and I wasn't being true to my full, my, to myself, right? I wasn't. So, I, I ended my marriage. I ended my job. I ended my, you know, I left New York City. I, 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 I'm not, like, built to get on a subway every morning. And I moved home. And when I moved back to my hometown in Utica, New York, I'm sitting here right now in my apartment talking to you from here, then I, that's kind of where this dynamic with the bar started. Like I'm going out a lot because I have to be social and I'm like rebuilding these friendships from high school, people that I'm running into and, right. and new people that I, you know, whatever, I'm like the new guy in town. But man, like what toll is, am I, is it taking on me going out this much? Right. Yeah, listen, <laughs> I get it. I so get it. I, yeah. I, you know, like yourself, have played out in uh, several bars. And I would wake up the next day, like three in the afternoon. Right. And, I'd, and I'd say, why do you always have to be the last one there? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like everyone else goes home, right? Yes. I need to yes. sit. I mean, I'm helping them sweep. I'm moving stools while the bartender is sweeping. Yes. It's a, a trap, thousand man. Per, a thousand percent. <laughs> that I mean, what you just said resonates the most because that's there's there's that level of commonality in a lot of people. But then there's the next level of like, you have to be the last guy there. <laughs> Like you have to close the bar down every time. Like, no. you know, you, you and I sound like very similar in that regard. And, and it's, it comes from a good place, right? Yeah. It comes from a place of loving life and, and just getting, being present, getting caught up in the moment yeah. and, um, and all those, all those kind of good attributes, but anything that goes too far to that side can, can get out of control. Yeah. 
<laughs> like I so like I'm like speechless right now because I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I met somebody that I could I could talk to, man. I'll get your phone number. We need to talk once a week. You know, and, and I've I've yeah. I've changed a lot. You know, I moved to North Carolina, things have changed. Uh but but I'll share this with you. This is and, and I think you're gonna relate to this. Not only am I the last one to leave. I bring the band home with me with a 12 pack. <laughs> yeah, let's go back to my house. And jam now, so the, the bar is closed at two. Let's go jam till four. <laughs> and then your neighbors the next day are like, was that you like five o'clock this morning <laughs> singing Sweet Caroline? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> right. right. It, yeah. it didn't sound good. <laughs> it didn't yeah. sound good at that. Right. Point. Oh, yeah. After a night of uh, drinking, your voice is not at its peak. That's right. Well, I, th I think, uh, Noah, that was a perfect setup for this song that I'm about to play. <laughs> yeah. For our listeners who just tuned in, I want to thank you all for, for joining us here on Wake Up to the Vibe. Uh, I am talking to my guest, uh, Noah Dinerstein, a.k.a. Live Noah, and we are about to play a song called All of My Bartenders Are Friends, right? Close, close. What, what is when it? All your friends are bartenders. Oh, when all of your friends are bartenders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first line. <laughs> when all your friends are bartenders. I love it. All right, I'll be right back. We're going to give this song a spin here. Hold on. You're waking up to the vibe here, ladies and gentlemen. And this is Live Noah. When all your friends are bartenders and there's nothing on the line And your morning might as well be midnight And the music doesn't move you as well as the whiskey does And you can't recall you believe in love And you're picking up what the devil's putting down, yeah Baby, I was born to run With a dollar in my pocket And a, a grip around the gun, yeah And you won't miss me when I'm gone The only lie I ever told Was I was here all along Or maybe I can't find a home Room inside my heart, but I, I'm gonna need a loan, yeah. So I'm building my house at the bar where the whiskey is my wife, and she's playing my guitar. When all your friends are bartenders and there's nothing on the line, in your morning might as well be midnight. And the music doesn't move you as well as the whiskey does And you can't recall you believe in love And you're picking up what the devil's putting down, yeah When I'm high, when I'm low There's a light on on the corner that it always lets me know, yeah That you can find a friend inside She'll be there for you your whole life For at least till closing time When all your friends are bartenders And there's nothing on the line And your morning might as well be midnight and the music doesn't move you as well as the whiskey does. And you can't recall you believe in love. You will find, you will find yourself and you're not alone. You will find, you will find yourself and you're not alone. You will find, you will find yourself and you're not alone. You will find, you will find yourself and Home. I'm changing everything after one more drink. You're waking up to the vibe. 
Oh, man. <laughs> Talk about a song that just brings me back. Brings me back. Hold on. Speaking of bringing them back, let's bring them back right here. Noah. <laughs> Noah Dinerstein, live Noah. When I, listen. <laughs> that was awesome, man. That was Thanks, awesome. Man. I feel so good right now i feel awesome. like I, I honestly feel i don't know why like i never met you before and we knew each other for five minutes before the show i feel like i went to a therapy session <laughs> <laughs> this is not supposed I mean, to have this effect on me <laughs> yo if you're if you're if you're laughing and vibing and feeling like you got therapy then you just then i've actualized <laughs> all my potential in the songwriting world and i can be done now no it's awesome stuff and then i'm reading the the, the chats right while the song's playing and i'm yeah. laughing because um because if you you're gonna read them after the show and you're gonna laugh you're gonna laugh okay. because a lot of our viewers are relating to the things you're saying they're relating to the style somebody wrote in there brings me back to the 70s which is cool. Oh, cool. Yeah. And nice. then someone else wrote, it brings me back to my early days. And, and it's just, man, that's, if you could have an emotional impact on people through your music, dude, you've, you've made it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So where do you, it. yeah. And I, I, I love specifically the seventies. I mean, my, my musical taste kind of somewhat skips over the eighties, but the seventies, um, nineties, you know, Two, early 2000s are big influences like 70s like led zeppelin allman brothers um i hope people are like hearing that in the music that that's a big compliment too yeah good stuff where do you go from here i mean wh wh what's next where i go back to bed no <laughs> no i actually thought of that you're like uh dude is it like does this have to be at seven <laughs> we yeah, got dude, another musician out of bed at seven yes <laughs> <laughs> After this, we're like being, you know, furloughed from my, from my day job. I go back to bed. Right. <laughs> um, no. So, um, so it's actually very cool. Very cool timing right now because yesterday just, that was my debut singles. First of all, so people can go on Spotify and stream it and Apple music, iTunes, wherever you get your music, you can go find when all your friends are bartenders by live. Noah, one word. Um, and it's, that's my debut music video on YouTube type in live Noah there, it's there. Awesome. My second, I'm working on my second single right now and I just set it up with my music producer. So I'm going to be back in the studio this Sunday, um, working on a song. So I have no, I can't tell you when it's going to drop. I, I, I have made, hopefully within a month we could get like some type of video and uh, audio out there to the people, but it's, um, uh, my most um personal song and really talks about it, it's just it's like a full-on breakup song yeah and um really just gets in the nitty-gritty of it and uh i think very relatable for tons of people and I, I hope uh i hope people follow me on social media at live noah so they can so they can uh see when that comes out yeah very cool congratulations to you on all of this man i know it's not easy it's not easy i have i have dear friends of mine one of, a good friend of mine is uh he was the light guy for the rolling stones for like 15 years and then he went on with rush and, and all these other bands and now he's with trans-siberian orchestra guess what out of work for the next year done no, no tours he's the light guy crazy you crazy. know so I, I i i really have a soft spot for for the local the local musician who's who's reaching for higher ground in the recording yeah. studio you know and you know what like we can we can kind of be upset about it and bummed about it but there's so many cool ways to get out there like this for instance yeah. this would never happened without the the darkness of what's happening with you know the the virus and there's so much silver lining though and i'm just trying to there's opportunities that arose mm -hmm. during this time that never would have arisen before like i played for this uh a campaign this this uh congresswoman's campaign she did like a fundraiser online they never would have reached out if if uh if it wasn't for this doing these doing like a zoom campaign concert yeah. you're and, you're 100 um, you're 100 right wake up to the vibe would not have been here if it wasn't for the pandemic same exact scenario i was playing my guitar on a saturday night friends were jumping in we were having fun on facebook live somebody made the recommendation you ought to fire up your radio show again oh awesome yeah and i thought about it you're like why not 
why not? I'm I'm yeah. stuck home, right? Right. And now, you know, now I've gotten obsessed by it. Now I'm like ready to call CBS and NBC and see if they're ready for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they are. <laughs> no, man. But I, I, even though we met 15 minutes ago, I you got great energy, and I watched the some of your clips before i you know when i was getting ready for the show a couple of nights ago and yesterday and it's just like a fresh voice you're you're positive thanks man i appreciate um, that you don't get a lot of that you don't get a lot of that like really authentic positivity yeah and, I, and that's where you're and like i said even though we met 15 minutes ago like yeah i think i, I don't think i will go back to bed right <laughs> that's <laughs> it the positive effect but you know thank you i appreciate that I, I appreciate you uh recognizing that because listen here's the deal it's working with people like you it's having people like you on the show that makes me this way because cool. this is the this thank is you. it man this is life this this is what life is all right this isn't hollywood we're not pretending there's no actors here okay right. there's no sound guy light guy engineer switching boards <laughs> are you kidding me i, I watched right. last night you were live last night and and what your computer crashed or something oh, oh i i well I, it was i had pr yes i did a facebook live off like a week ago and then i re-released it yeah and my computer it crashed 30 seconds before I was supposed to go live and it had my lyrics. <laughs> I was watching you. I'm like, I love this. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> like my computer was just like this. I hopefully I can show you my computer set up like this. Right. Right. And I, and I put my phone there and I can look at the lyrics while I'm doing my right. Facebook live, just like this <laughs> crash 30 seconds before I went live. What? And I'm like, <laughs> I got to remember the song. <laughs> no, listen. I actually open up my live streams when I play guitar, like on a Saturday night. We'll go live. I know the words to six songs. I'll play fifty. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Hey, so yeah. I got I have uh, something for you here, Noah, that we didn't talk about and discuss, but at the last minute, I just I really like this next song, man. I, I like the other two. Don't get me wrong. And I've never played three songs on on a show yet with any artist oh, wow. yeah um, i don't even i don't even know what you're about to play yeah i know you don't so i and i hope you're okay with it because i already queued it up <laughs> yeah, but I, I, dude yeah. I, I love this song tree of life oh cool is is uh tell me a little bit about it and what i'm going to do well before we go there hold on let me back up getting ahead of, ahead of myself spotify itunes no alive and oh live noah li oh my gosh live noah you're, you're not the first person to do that everybody wants i think everybody wants the name to be noah live <laughs> <laughs> um yes live so, noah a anybody that liked when all your friends are bartenders it's it's streaming everywhere itunes spotify apple music you can find it anywhere you find your music you can find it okay stream it send it to a friend put it in a playlist uh, the best thing you can do for that single is add it to a playlist. That's how Spotify really tracks its uh, success or progress. Right. And then um, really what I'd love everybody on this live stream that's that's listening right now is to go follow me on social media, Live Noah on Facebook. And if you're on Instagram, Live Noah on Instagram. That's That's huge for me right now. Awesome. Awesome. We're going to close out the show together. All right. I'm going cool. to... Uh, I'm going to play the song and that's going to be the close of the show. And then you and I are going to chat when I hit the stop, go live button. Okay, cool. So hang tight uh, real quick. If you could just cue this up for me, tree of life. What is it about? I, I just thought it was a really cool vibe, man. What, what is it? about? Yeah, man. I, I, I so appreciate you playing the song because uh, to me, it, it's one of my most important songs. If, if a song can be important at all, um, it's, it was it was sparked by a the Tree of Life synagogue shooting that happened about a year and a half ago now. And that's why it's called Tree of Life on the surface level. But the whole idea is just that, you know, the darkness can't bring us down. Hatred can't bring us down. Um, tragedy is not going to bring us down as a, as a person, as a community, as a nation. And uh, the Tree of Life, it just grows and grows and grows. And... And that last refrain of that chorus, we just keep doing it at the very end of the song. If everybody can hold on tight for the whole song. And um, and it's just kind of like a hopeful refrain at the end. Awesome. Awesome. 
I'm going to switch over to the song. Before I do, I'm going to say thank you very much, everybody who's in the room. Thank you for the comments. Uh, Noah's going to read all the comments after the show. I'm going to go and read all the comments. Let us know what you think. We've got a whole new show coming at you Monday. Monday, new format. You're going to love it. And uh, make sure you tune in on Friday. I've got uh, Keaton Simmons on the show on Friday. I've got a guest tomorrow, but we're still trying to confirm it. I'm really hoping he comes through. Uh but we'll make it happen. Hey, you're waking up to the vibe. We love you. Peace. Pay it forward. Let your light shine. And Noah, hang tight. We'll be back, okay? And this is a song here from Noah. Where is it? Hold on. Hold on. And it's called The Tree of Life. Have a great day, everybody. Enjoy the song. It grows and grows No matter the ground Or the wind that blows And where it ends Nobody really knows But the first seeds In our control The earth spins And the leaves they fall they say that's the circle of life is all But I think something more is going on Cause it hurts too much It hurts too much to move along The news is saying the devil's in town Seems to think the whole world is upside down But I know what he really means That it hurts so much He can't make sense of anything Hold on To something you can lean on I got a message you can dream on Tonight the dark's so dark I can't see the thoughts in my head But I can see a flame across the street And there's hope in that Tree of life, it's gonna grow